Hello everybody, welcome into Rock Painting 101. Um, today we are going to be working on an elephant um, and we're gonna kind of use a stacking technique to create this uh, fun design. So over here on my plate or my palette, um, I've got just black, gray, and white. Um, we're gonna use a little bit of each and get different gray tone combinations. Um, as we're working on our elephant. So I'm going to start with the back layer. So imagine if you're looking at an elephant kind of almost head on, we're going to start with the very back layer here. So I want it to be a darker gray. So I'm just going to use the back end of my brush uh, to kind of swirl this black into my gray here. And I want a lot of different tones of gray. It's going to be going from dark to light. Just like that. Wipe off the end over here, I got a little rag. So I don't end up getting that all over myself. And we're gonna go right into that. And I didn't blend it 100%. I don't mind having a little bit of different variations. It'll kind of blend as it goes on the rock here. And we're going to start with kind of the back end of the elephant. So we don't wanna go all the way up because our head's gonna be pretty big on the top. So imagine if you're looking at an elephant head on, here's his head will be way up here. His back would probably only come up to about here. So we're gonna start with that and we're just gonna place down kind of his hind end in this dark, dark color because it's gonna be in the very back. So it's gonna be kind of almost in the shadow. And he's got a couple of legs back there. So almost like a, an upside down U shape. get his legs on there and they're always just a little bit wider at the bottom to give them maybe a little bit more of a balance like so and then once you've got the legs down you can add in his belly back here And go ahead and fill all of that in. And you don't want a super thick layer of paint because we want this to dry kind of quickly. But we're gonna be working in layers here. There we go. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna let that dry just a smidge before we go in um, with our uh, next layer here. And I'm not gonna rinse off my brush. Um, this brush I'm using is a number four flat style brush. I kinda like, ooh, I'm out of frame, sorry. Number four flat side brush and my whole rock is out of frame. So sorry about that. I'll be better for the rest of the video, I promise. But So there we go, we've got just basically, that was our upside down U filled in the belly with the darker color. So it doesn't take too long for acrylics to dry, um, but you do want to give it a little bit of time uh, just so that you're not blending the next color on top. We want to kind of have a separate color on top. So the next area we're going to do is we're going to do kind of a, an up and his belly. So I'm just going to go and pull a little bit more of this gray into my dark, right in the center. I don't want to mix it into all the dark because then it will get too dark. Just like so. Wipe off my tip. And we're gonna do kind of a belly layer here, just to emphasize and pull that forward even more. It's a little bit higher. And that almost is too close. I bet a little bit more gray right into that. Like so. A little bit more gray. So you can kind of blend these colors right on your rock sometimes, especially, see, I've, my color underneath wasn't quite as dark as it should have been. Okay, we're gonna mix in that gray even more so. If you can't get it, lightened up enough. That's why we've got a little dab of white over here. You can even grab a little hint of that white and slap it in there if you need to. 
The next one we're gonna want to actually be able to tell the difference. So I'm gonna let this dry a little bit better before I do this next layer of gray. So we'll be right back. For this next layer, it's not 100% dry, but I'm just gonna get the outside. We're going to do the shoulders and the front two legs. So I'm gonna go right into my lighter gray here. And we're gonna do shoulders, which will be a little higher than the back end, and his front two legs. So we're gonna start with kind of the same shape as we had before, which will be like kind of the upside down U. We're really gonna lay that on there and get these front two legs on. And I'll kind of force those back two legs into um, the background. A forced perspective here. Just make sure you don't pull up too much of that under color. If you feel like you're getting too much under color, you haven't let it dry long enough. So these will come down a little bit further just because of, like I said, the perspective. So we got this giant upside down U, like so. Okay, and then we're gonna fill this area in as well with that lighter gray. And it might need another coat because I'm probably gonna pull up some of that darker gray because I'm being impatient here, guys. Imagine that, you guys know I am. Let's get some more of that lighter gray in there. And then his shoulders are kind of broader, like so. There we go, go into thinner legs and then wider at the foot. There we go. Just like that. And we're gonna have one more layer that's right here in front of the shoulders. But as you can see, you're kind of building up this layers, those back legs kind of tuck behind just because they're a little bit darker and obviously they're shorter, which pushes them back a little bit. And you can kind of see that belly layer in there as well, kind of where it sags down a little bit. So we're gonna let this dry completely and then we're gonna put our head and trunk layer on next. All right, I mixed my white in with my gray here too to get my nice light color for this top and pretty well dry, eh, pretty close. So for the top layer here, we're going to have our head and we are going to have our ears, our trunk. So we're just gonna start laying in those shapes and then we'll define them a little bit more. So our head almost will emulate the top of our shoulders here. We're gonna have it come way up high here and have our head. Making sure to have plenty of paint on my brush here because I don't wanna pull up that paint from below. Center here. It's almost like a heart shape that's missing the indent at the top. Or maybe, I guess, a rounded edged triangle maybe would be a little bit more accurate. Like so. And now we're going to add our trunk right off that edge there. It's going to come down between the two legs, and you can curl it whichever direction that you want to. I usually have it kind of arched back and up one way or the other. Like so. Okay, so we got our nose there. And we need some ears. Like so. Try to make those match as well as I can here. Just about like that. Okay, so we've got our shapes on there. That's our basic. 
bit. Now we can kind of play around with it a little bit, like where the tusks come out, kind of usually bulges out a little bit there. You can get those little bulges. Okay, now we've got all these different hues in here already um, of our darks and lights. So you can come in and add in little shadow areas, um, edges and things like that as well. But like before we do that, I just wanna pull this up closer. So now you can see we've got our layers here. Now that these are dry, you can see them a little bit better. We've got obviously our, our, you know, our heads in the foreground there. Whoop. A little off screen, you know, our front legs. You can see that belly kind of in there that we did. It was kind of hard to see when it was wet, but I I can see it here. Hopefully you can see it there. Um, now that it's dry, you got that little belly layer back there and then our hind legs. Now we can come in with our, our other hues and tones of gray to kind of define some more of your elephant. So things like if you want to come in with your... Um, next hue back a gray we can kind of do this arch line for like the eye area and where the trunk kind of starts here because the trunk kind of pulls up and forward off of the elephant a little bit which creates this kind of shadow pocket or where the eye kind of sets back just a little bit things you you add them nice and slow see and they really will start to kind of bring out some definition okay You can do that as well to add like little wrinkles on the on the tusk. If you get a nice, because this is a square edge brush, get it to a nice straight line. See how thin that can get? And very carefully get one of your darker hues in there, just the tiniest little bit, and you can come in here and add some of those little lines on there, just like that, on his trunk. And you can even go along and add a little bit of shading on the outside edge to pull that top forward a little bit or down on like the bottom of the ears. You can kind of go along that edge line and kind of pull just a little bit of darker on the underside of his face. Like so. You can kind of continue to add more colors around edges, you know, more shading, variations of that gray. A big thing to remember is when you're adding in these layers, it's a real light touch to kind of help blend them into the layers below. But with this style, since we stacked our colors like this, you can kind of get away with having a little bit of um, some sharper edges without feeling Bad. So that's why I like this for, you know, our beginner style tutorial. With this area kind of in between where the ears connect, you can kind of give a little shading line in there. Just to kind of give that some separation. Yeah. But this is just, you know, for those that are just getting kind of into doing some animal rock painting to be able to kind of come up with something pretty fun. Even the bottom side of this little trunk that's on towards the bottom could have a little bit of a shadow on it, a little bit of a darker area down at the bottom. As far as the eyes, just to give it a little bit of a dot to start working with, you can use the back side of your brush, go into that kind of darker area. Their eyes are kind of hidden, you know, in that area there, you can kind of Put a little dot area down. I'm just gonna kind of add them in there with that so that you kind of got the area to start with. Then we're gonna kind of pull them out just a smidge. 
the sides. Just kind of spread them out just a little bit. Now we do need tusks still here. And just to stick with kind of the gray tones we're doing, I'm gonna add a dot of white here on my plate. I know tusks are more of an ivory color usually, but I just wanna stick with my gray tones. So I'm gonna take my white and just get the littlest bit of gray into there. And this isn't a factually accurate elephant anyways. So I'm wiped out most of the paint off my brush. I didn't even run it underwater or anything. And I'm just gonna go right into that white I'm gonna kind of swirl it a little bit so I don't have too much of a square edge because I don't wanna dirty another brush. We've been using the same brush for this entire thing. And right off those little bumps, we, we added those little bump outs, we're gonna add in our uh, tusks. So we're gonna have them kind of come down and I think I'm just gonna have it kind of point here towards the center and one here on the other side, down and towards the center. I'm able to get kind of that pointy end there, like that. And then wipe my brush back off. I'm actually gonna go right back in with that gray, right on that connecting, connection spot, right where it comes out. And add just another little bump there where it comes out. that little highlight kind of pulls because it kind of bumps it forward which would almost make it a slightly lighter spot pull that up there we go now you can also go along and add on a few other details like oh uh, they have um their little nails they have those little Nails on their toes. You could go in with the just any shade that's just a little bit different than the one that's down there. I'm gonna put my brush on its side just so it doesn't get too wide too fast. Just add on a few more details. If you're worried about doing that, you could also come back. We could have done this on, you know, a surface. You know, you could have had a Either, you know, the, you know, browns or even some, some green, depending on where your elephant's going to be living. You can come in and add in, you know, little pieces of grass and things like that to kind of cover up the bottom of the feet. If you, if you don't like how they turned out, I'm going to add in just another little indent up here on the top here where it kind of dips down there. Just kind of pull that part forward. So again, you can kind of keep adding just with different hues and shades of, of gray on here, as much or as little as you want, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, you just learn by doing when it comes to these things. And I'm not an expert by any means on doing more realistic style rocks, as I'm sure you guys know if you follow along with me but we're challenging ourselves this month so I am too so so there we go I'm gonna leave it at that for today and I hope you give something like this a try um, if you do let me know how it goes don't forget to subscribe to the channel like the page all that good stuff and we'll see you all soon with another rock painting tutorial so everybody have a great day bye bye now